Uh, I hope my screen is visible to everybody. Otherwise, uh, please speak up. So, um, I'm going to speak about uh, the new APL wiki. Um, and the APL wiki you might have heard of before. It used to look like this. Um, and that it had several issues. Uh, one of them was that it wasn't very approachable. It was kind of hard to find things. And it wasn't really written in a very wiki-like format. That's also the whole look of it. It might have been up to date look when it was uh, when it was started, but that's not really how the web looks anymore. And finally, uh, it's running on something uh, called Monmon Wiki, uh, which is implemented in Python two. And I noticed that Python two was about to die uh, a while ago, um, and in fact, it died this spring. It is now officially out of support and even severe um, severe uh, security issues will not be fixed anymore. So I, I mentioned to my friends that maybe we should, uh, we should do something about this since, since anyway, it's running on unsupported software very soon. Uh, maybe we should take it on and, and refresh it. And so that's what led to our rebirth of, um, of the APL wiki. And so the front page uh, that used to look like this, it now, it now looks very similar to um, to Wikipedia's front page. That's what we, we styled it after, that being like the de facto standard for what a wiki looks like. So this is what APL wiki looks like uh, when you first approach it. Uh, I think we can all agree that it uh, looks a bit more inviting. Uh, so what I'm going to do today, um, it's not just a, a presentation. You're welcome to, to stop me at any time um, and ask questions. And I'm going to use the same trick as I've done, if you've ever seen my, my presentation about Apple Cart before. Um, it's kind of a win-win thing. If you get inspired to ask, well, but does the APL Wiki have an article about this? You see, then either I'll impress you by showing that yes, it does in fact have an article about that, or you'll give uh, some input as to what needs to be on the APL Wiki. So we can't lose. Now, uh, you probably know that I work for Dialog, but the APL Wiki is not a Dialog project and not a Dialog pro uh, product either. Uh, the, most of the contributions that have been so far have been from people that also work at Dialog. Some of it we've done in our free time. Um, and um, still, we want it to be a general APL uh, Wiki. So that means that we try to treat all the different implementations of APL um, fairly and, and equally. But of course, there's always going to be some bias by, uh, by the writer of, of an article and of, of text. We can't avoid that. We're not trying to hide that. There is definitely um, a slant towards using Dialog APL or, or similar implementations. So I'm go what I'm going to go do today is I'm simply going to show you some of the pages and some of the features of um, of APL Wiki. So right here at the front page, uh, there, um, being that it's based on on Media Wiki, it is it's a Media Wiki site just like Wikipedia. It means that it's very easy to go in and contribute. Um, we do have some guidelines, as you can see here in the in the pinkish box on the bottom right, um, with some uh, some help to how to contribute to the uh, to the wiki, um, and with the and other than that one can just go into any page and edit it you don't have to be logged in you don't have to be uh to be a member but your things the things that you try to, to change they will be reviewed um if liked. so so it this it's a very it's a very easy uh, low barrier to, to access here right so what kind of content can be on the APL wiki? So we would try to make it similar to Wikipedia, which I assume most of you have, have seen. It is an encyclopedia. It means that we have articles about subjects. What kind of subjects is it that you could find on the APL wiki? wiki? Um, so it can be about a primitive. 
so here is for example uh, the famous row um, and it's not documentation notice that there we already have plenty of documentation every implementation that uh, with respect for itself comes with documentation as well but what is here it's talking about the primitive and giving further examples and if we if we look further down um, it can even speak about various variations over a, uh, uh, a primitive the history from the primitive related related things ways that it's it's commonly used um, we have links to external resources so if I mentioned right before we began here that I give a, a class every every two weeks so it has links to links to the transcript from that um, and various other tutorials that are out there are two various documentation suites that are available online um, and even to J we treat Dre as kind of like an almost APL so we mention it in contrast but it's not a J wiki um, but we'll still explain the differences um, and then most pages will have these boxes at the bottom um, that help you with navigation and so you can see not every primitive is here and we don't even strive to have every primitive have its own page it's those primitives that are interesting to have articles about um, and then you can use that to, to navigate around and you can see there are some red links here that means that there are pages that aren't there yet and that's fine anybody can contribute another thing we could have um, is about various artifacts in the APL community so here for example is APL quote quote that those of you that are more than half a century old will remember what uh, what APL quote quote is was um, but for somebody who is new to APL, somebody comes into the community and people are speaking about APL quote quote, they get all confused. What is this with the, with the quote quote symbol? It's said in the quote quote. Um, so then they can find information about it here with appropriate links to where do you find this? Why do you, where do you find the APL quote quote online? Um, and here's an example of such a box at the bottom as well, um, APL community. And you can see uh, that BAA is here, of course, um, together with uh, notable people um, and then, of course, it's interesting who is exactly notable. And there's a link on every page at the bottom to about APL Wiki, um, where it will say who who merits to be on the wiki. It doesn't it's not enough to be an APL user? It has to be somebody who has actually contributed something to um, to the language, the community, the or the evolution, or who has somehow had uh, a side influence on the on the creators of APL. This one I figured I had to show off. Uh, you might have noticed uh, the when it briefly showed the front page of the old APL wiki that the logo is not quite the same as the old one. We kind of turned it around, straightened it up. Um, the old logo for APL wiki was the is the same logo as that of the company APL team, which is basically Kai, um, Kai Yeager. And now that that Kai is not in charge of the wiki anymore, it's appropriate for us to change it at least a little bit and. Uh, one of my students came up with uh, with this cute APL expression that can generate a matrix of sizes of these blobs uh, for the logo. And so one of the things we have here on the wiki, uh, these articles that are tutorials in APL that teach APL from some kind of perspective or in some kind of manner. And so what this one, just as an example does, is it starts off with this expression and then it it goes through and uh, explains step for step every little piece of APL builds it up. So this is actually a standalone introduction to APL based on the APL wiki logo. And it takes everything as far as at the bottom rendering the logo in an HTML renderer. So ready to go on the uh, on the web should you want to use this. Um, and uh, all the, with all the code that I'm ready to put into an APL interpreter. So the, this is another kind of thing you can have. So this is, it's a really useful resource um, for when you introduce people to APL. You always refer them to the APL wiki. There's lots of stuff there. Then there are good old classics like the Fin APL idiom library. Uh, it has now been been reborn here with full syntax coloring um, as a proper article and searchable, copyable, and so on. I'm not exactly suggesting that you still use the, the FinAPL 
idiom list, I think you should use apple cart instead. So, but that's up to you, of course. So listings, um, resources that are there are here. Um, some of the content from the old APL wiki dot com is available here. Some of it we're in the process of moving over. Fear not, all the content on the old APL wiki is still available at uh, old.aplwiki.com. So you can always get there. So um, the front page is actually a resource just by itself. So if you just send somebody to APL wiki, um, you can um, you can guide them towards these these learning resources, introductions, overview of the language, community, and so on. Um, so it just if you, if you just have twenty seconds uh, to introduce somebody to APL, then you say, hey, check out aplwiki.com, and it starts right away with simple examples and and links to more examples. And we can see the language overview actually consists of of all these boxes. From, that are on the, all the other pages. You can get an, an overview of all the things that we write about um, on the APL wiki. Um, then there's a really cool thing uh, that we've managed because we're in, in complete control over this this uh, media wiki uh, instance that's running APL wiki. Uh, that means we can actually tweak some things that normally are not possible on um, on a wiki. And that is interactive things. Some of you might have seen uh, Marshall Lockbaum's presentation about uh, about cells, um, and there he showed off uh, very briefly, just hovering his mouse around in his browser, and he had this interactive things that showed sh cell shapes. And we actually managed to put that straight in here to into the um, into the wiki. So there are things like that, and it's possible to do things things like this. Um, in order to get proper interaction, then you have to contact the moderators because there are potential security issues like this. But just to show you what's, what's possible in, in the new APL wiki. Um, in fact, uh, when I say it can be interactive, you can do things and have the wiki react to it, then you should have asked me, wait, but can it actually execute APL? And yes, it can execute APL. So here, for example, is um, the page on, as, as you can see, we have pages on APL implementations. We have these info boxes about every implementation, so you can compare them easily. And for NGN APL, which is implemented in JavaScript, which can run on the web, we can actually we can actually execute APL code right here. So let's run that. Hi. Um, then there are there's nostalgia. Um, and and also reference material uh, that can be really really hard to track down in the in the, this modern internet age. All the things that that didn't have internet at the time. So what we have done here, just as an example, and there are many more pages like this uh, for every every event that has has happened. Um, and that is painstakingly gone through and found out exactly when did every APL conference happen. Uh, when and where and what was it called? Uh, so if there's this thing you remember in '87, somebody presented something, uh, then well, let's click on '87. Here's exactly what everybody presented. And you know what all these links are? They're links to the actual papers. So you can go right now for free because of the COVID-19 outbreak. Everything from the ACM's library is free, and you can actually find out everything um, in PDF. So this is another of the things that we have. Um, here's another list. Dialog APL versions, as an example. Um, when exactly were, were various things added to the language? If you want to see for compatibility reasons or just for historical reasons. How long time has, have you have trains? Why am I not using them yet? And with links to, to all the announcements and so on. Then there are examples of using APL. If sometimes you, you're just sitting there and somebody asks you for an example, how do you use APL? What, what can you do? Just show me an example. Well, and then you can't, find, um, you can't find a good example right then when you need it. Well, APL Wiki. So we've got some simple examples. Um, 
and and you can uh, you can look them up here. You can, I mean, you can see the table of contents here. There's there's plenty, 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 plenty to go. Um, APL services. So um, of course, I like to pull up Apple Card um, as as a service. Um, that that in order to get people to actually find it, this discoverability of things. By, uh, this in a way makes APL Wiki into into a portal for APL, so you can you can find all these these things. And as I said, interactivity. You can actually use Apple Card right here um, inside. Um, and and you can see that we have this info box at the bottom, and uh, and you can see various resources. Um, so Apple Card comes goes over under sharing code, but Lots of other things as well. Can go into all of it. Um, then we have pages about concepts in APL. So these are things that um, would not appear in any documentation for any implementation because it's kind of understood. It's APL after all, right? But what if you don't understand the APL array? Many people come from other programming languages and they think that an array just means a list of lists. That's not the case in APL. And once you start really looking into it closer, then is it using the APL2 style arrays or is it the sharp APL arrays? And how, how does J's array uh, differ from this? And what exactly is a data type? And what is a scalar? And why are scalars arrays and so on? All of this is described in detail in pages like this. And that's just, that's just arrays. What are, about all the other concepts that we speak about in, in, uh, in APL? What is rank? What is depth? What is shape? Um, and then I would just want, before I, I stop this, I'll just uh, show a couple of very, very simple pages. This is somebody who had just started uh, learning APL and he thought he also wanted to contribute. So he created a tiny little page on times and you might think, oh, well, it becomes a stub. It's just this little page. But when somebody starts a page, somebody else can go in and contribute. These are not like blog posts or announcements or um, of speeches. This is a collaborative thing. The whole thing, the, the whole APL wiki is a collaborative effort. So he comes in and creates a stub page about times and somebody else go, comes in and adds uh, various things about it and then slowly you can build up. It's not so long yet because there's not so much to say about times. Um, and, and the same thing goes, goes for divide. Um, but all of a sudden you can have interesting things. You know, re reduction with division gives alternating product. Well, then that links over to reduction. So this is very briefly um, APL Wiki. And now, since nobody interrupted me yet, I want to ask you um, right in chat or speak up, what should I search for? And we'll see what we find. And in the best case, we'll, find, we'll impress you. And in the also best case, uh, we'll find out which articles to prioritize next. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. So I just want to uh, say this is absolutely amazing. Um, like this is phenomenal work. Uh, I'm I'm an unknown entity to this community. Um, I'm from the C++ community, but APL is secretly by far my favorite language. And I've been working on a talk that got postponed because of COVID, but I'd spent like four months working on it. And I've read, I don't know, 50 papers or so. And one of the most difficult things was trying to get my hands on the conference proceedings. Um, on the ACM, some of them have like conference proceeding manuals, um, but it's just like, it's notoriously difficult to go back and like you hear references to the 82 Heidelberg conference, et cetera, et cetera. But like tracking down the papers, um, it, it was by far like the most difficult thing in like the research that I was doing on the language. Um, and uh, yeah, this is this is just like, this is a godsend um, for people that are trying to learn about like the history of the language because there's so much of it in APL. So anyways, just to you and to everybody that worked on this, like, thank you so much. This is, this is at least for me, gonna be like a, a massive uh, saving in like tracking down stuff. So thank you so much. I'm happy to hear that. Funny you should mention with the, um, the, the history of things, It was just this page was added recently. That might be interesting for people to see, of course, linked to everything. So, okay, anybody else? 
Remember, if you speak, then you need to unmute, which you can do by holding the space bar, I think. Adam, can yes, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You asked for, let's try something. Yep. Click enter tacit programming and see what you come up with. Tacit programming, here you go. So it speaks about how you say primitives, derived functions, and has a guide to trains um, and examples for that, a couple of use cases for that, and then it has a link to a whole bunch of tutorials and documentation about it. Wow, very nice. Because in teaching, in teaching uh, beginners, I'm a little bit uh, leery about introducing tacit programming early. Right. Yeah. No. I I also tend to hold it off unless it's somebody who has already done tacit programming in, in another language and it comes natural to them. Um, but yeah, this 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 should be a full guide to that. I don't really see this much missing there. Thank you. Sure. Uh, based on the conversation just before this started, what's, what happens if you put user commands? Ah, interesting. I just I know that user command doesn't have a page, but uh, as as recently as today, I marked that we needed a page on on user commands. So it doesn't it doesn't have that yet. In this tacit program, you got something in here that's you know dialog APL and then D Z A I M A slash APL. What's that? Um, that's actually I think I think is one of my students originally. Somebody had taught APL in in the APL Orchard, and he was very excited um, as a Java programmer that he went out and uh, implemented his own APL. Um, so we can actually click on that. So he calls himself Jaima, and I think that's how it's pronounced at least. Um, and he's implemented an APL based on, on Dialog APL, um, but with some various extensions and some slight differences. Um, and as it mentions here, actually, it's the only APL that can run natively on Android, so as that I know of, with a real interface. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for such a such a thing, for example, you hear about some some odd APL implementation you've never heard about before, um, then that's the right choice. Let's say you somebody mentions an APL implementation called RAD, so you will have a page about that as well. Holy cow! The answer to this question is probably that it's not existed because I've searched a long time. Um, but is there a history on the naming of glyphs? There is a big conversation recently in the Kotlin community about naming their scan algorithms. Um, this, the brief version is that they have two different reduction algorithms, fold and reduce. One of them takes an initial value and the other one just uses the first element. And they decided to uh, name their scan algorithms, instead of just overloading it, um, they decided to call the analog of the one that uh, takes like an initial, uh, an initial value scan, and then the one that takes the first element scan reduce, which is extremely confusing. And uh, yeah. anyways, there was a bunch of discussion on whether scan was the right name or not, and uh, scan comes from APL, and a few people tried to track down Kenneth Iverson's motivation for choosing scan as the name, but um, it, no one was able to come up with that. Um, so do, do you know if for like any of the glyphs where it's not immediately obvious what the I mean, uh, naming, like the source of the motivation or, um, and I, I realize that's so specific, like that's not something that's gonna be necessarily- I, I had a conversation recently on exactly this, I think it was an email conversation or something about where did the name scan come from and did it mean anything? And I think the suggestion was that it's because it scans across and there's not actually much more to it than that. 
but I don't know if there's records of conversations or anything. So I, I know that there's no central page to discuss uh, the, discuss the names of things. I don't know if that would even be appropriate, but um, some pages, they will, they will discuss why things are called the way they are. So just one I, I remember um, that uh, Zilda, why is it called Zilda? So it will, it will explain that. Um, even even the name APL has as a page um, for that. And Matt says to look at index generator. <coughs> uh, see, okay. And so it has the history a history section, right? So that speaks about the name and why it's called like that. Um, so yes, uh, if we have a page on a glyph or on a um, uh, on a primitive and the person writing it has uh, has knowledge about it um then it might very well be included here um i'm not sure it is even known always why iverson chose the names he did um so it might even be impossible today to find out everything <laughs> sorry some things are lost to history but let's let, let's at least try to conserve as much as we can before it is what is lust? Yeah, this is this is yeah, this is fan like the fact that you've mentioned that C plus plus and both Go uh, use IOTA, and just like fun fact, because I'm from the C plus plus community, there was like a huge Twitter war at the beginning of 2019, uh, which I cutely named IOTA shaming, because um, some senior engineers at Adobe or a senior engineer at Adobe got into it with uh, another individual. And basically like one of the individuals was saying that IOTA was just a God awful name. And it's just like for people to feel smart. And then the senior Adobe engineer said like, as software engineers, we have a responsibility to understand like the history of our profession. And if you know the history, like it comes from APL anyways, there's, there's two camps on some people agree with him. Some people don't, but yeah, this, this website looks uh, looks amazing. Mm. Marshall says IOTA shaming is on the page. It is? I don't know. Can you find it? Search for shaming. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Sean Parent. Yeah, he's the, uh, is. He's the Adobe engineer. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Got it all, right? Well, no, we don't, which is why uh, <laughs> we want people to contribute. Yeah, we need one on user commands. Um, actually, the, yeah, maybe the names of things uh, will come into it. One of the things I really want to, to spend some time on is create a, a page on mnemonics um, because I think, I think a lot of the, the APL symbols and what they do is very, and, and even the locations on the keyboard uh, on the st traditional APL keyboard, at least, um, it's very mnemonic. So that might be where some of these things come in as well. I just haven't gotten around to writing this page. So it might look like a small number of articles, 200 and something, um, compared to Wikipedia's having, well, I don't know, three orders of magnitude uh, more than that. Um, but uh, when you look at the content that's here for, for every, on every page is, is something, um, then, then I think that's, that's worth it. Actually, here's a little, if nobody else has something uh, they want to search for, there's something Marshall told me to try. I think it was Marshall said it at least. That's actually on, that's part of a normal thing in, in MediaWiki is a random page. So let's just, let's just try it, see what happens. Kona, anybody ever heard about Kona? It's a K implementation. Look at that. Mm. This is a, hey, look at that. What a coincidence. <laughs> random page about K. And again, this is oh. not. Oh, super. Yeah. So, so in K in relationship to APL, um, again, it's not about K, uh, but it's about K and APL. And in general, when it speaks about notable people, for example, then it won't speak about them in general. It will speak about their uh, um, their connection to APL. So, how about Q? How about Q? I, I'm not sure if Q. Uh, I don't think Q has a has a page yet, uh, mainly because it's not really that interesting. Um, it's it's mostly just something to do with K, but Q is mentioned here and there, right? It's mentioned here. We need to make a page for it. What about R? Okay. Uh, yeah. 
Certainly, we don't have a page on uh, on R. Uh, that would be an interesting thing. Wikipedia claims that R is influenced by APL. Don't they take the arrow for assignment? I'm not sure if APL came up with that first, actually. Um, but that might be something to look into. Is there anything on the, the visit of Bill Gates to IP Sharp in the 80s? Um, I, think, I think we do mention, mention that thing somewhere. Oops, Bill Gates, of course. Yeah, no, no. But I know about that. Um, I, I know that, that Bill Gates considered making an APL and then decided to, to go with BASIC instead. What a shame. All right, well, I heard that uh, he was always a bigger fan of APL than BASIC and that the rumor was that he actually had like an APL manual in his desk for a decade or something. Um, and that when he visited the IP Sharp office, uh, the owners didn't really think that personal computers were going to take off. <laughs> um, but if it was too hard, I, I don't know. Um, does APL Wiki have a place where people can ask questions to be answered on the wiki? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, are there talk pages? Well, there are talk pages, but they are so. If we go into into any any page like this, so then there might there might be a discussion page about something. Um, you can see that just the one that I remember. So about Zilda, for example, there's a discussion here about whether it's a glyph or it's a value. Um, but that but that's an interesting thing. Um, and and it's not really a question answer site as much either. But what one could do is say if, if one wants to know about something, that means they they know that the thing exists, is they could create a stub page for that thing they want to know about and then hope that others will notice. We certainly have some people that check all the recent changes and the new new pages all the time. So you can check that. Um, and and then uh, they will Make notice that new page. Mnemonics. What do you say? Make one for mnemonics now. Yeah. Um, and then they'll notice a new page and then flesh it out with new things. Um, and uh, occasionally I just I see a word somewhere uh, mentioned that, that I think, hey, wait, that this should be blue. It should be something you could you could look up as well, and then create a new page. So, um, yeah, then I could create a page, a stub page, and then add in more things. So it actually happened happened uh, yesterday. I was looking at some of the I think the day before. Yeah, it was. Um, and then I, I was uh, I was looking at some of the training materials that had the link to APL Trainer. I thought, oh wait, Baron, Dan Baronet doesn't have a page, so I created a page, and then afterwards. Uh, Marshall saw this and, and he came in and, and added all the all his presentations, a list of that, so you could you could find that. Um, so that we have that about people as well, and it will have lists of things. So if you want to say, oh, when has when has Aaron Sue spoken, and where was it? Can't remember. There's all these different conferences and so on. So here's a list of all these things he has spoken about the APL and all his papers and so on. You can find that. So, so going back to to Dan, there it turns out that the day I created his page is actually his birthday. I didn't know that; it just happened to be. I thought it was cute. <laughs> Anybody else? Otherwise, I mean, if you have a request to the wiki and you don't feel like making a uh, making a page, um, you can you can always contact one of the uh, uh, people that are involved, uh, either uh, Richard Park or uh, myself, for example, um, and then maybe we can do something about it. Any other questions? Very well done. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for attending.